Hi okay, kids, hope you're all well, hope you've had a good week. Today's story is the next part in what's happened with Joshua and the Israelites and we're going to see how they made peace in the promised land and we're going to learn how important it is that they made peace and also more uh, fully how we can make peace with God. What do you think of when I say the word peace? Maybe you have had history lessons at school already that have talked about world wars and countries fighting and invasions, lots of hurt and pain, and at the end, there's peace. Maybe you think of big things like that and lots of people, or maybe you think of something like this. Sit back, relax, and I'll be back in a couple of minutes. I think it's really important to get it right. Yeah, okay. Well, will you promise that you'll get it done by tomorrow? I need, oh, oh! Oh, hold on. Ow. Oh, Lego again. Oh, hold on a sec, please. Girls, please can you come and tidy up, my darlings? All right, there's quite a bit of Lego here. Please can you come and tidy up? Thank you. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, so what? Yeah, tomorrow. Is that still alright? I was yeah, wondering where that hole was. I just uh... Yeah, I know it's expensive, but we need to agree, otherwise we'll never get into contract. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you supply the red, you'll supply... Oh! Oh, hold on, dear, oh dear. Girls, please, I asked you to get rid of that Lego, you said that you would. Girls, I don't know what to say. I'm really disappointed. I asked you two times to put the Lego away and it's still out on the floor. It's not something I want to argue about. Come on. Uh... Come on, I'll help you. We'll do it together. Mama's, getting... Mama's coming home soon. We don't want her to see all of this mess and to step on it, do we? Well done, my darling. Last little bit. Right. So, what do you say for not doing it the first time when I told you? Sorry. Sorry. All right, and I'm sorry for getting annoyed with you. Come here. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. Is that ring a bell? Maybe not exactly the same in your family, maybe similar, but no one likes arguments, do we? We don't like arguments, we don't like hurt, we don't like disagreements, we don't want pain to go on and on and on, and it's good when there's peace at the end. And today's story, again, true story from the book of Joshua, is when uh, it takes place after Joshua and the Israelites had fought the Battle of Jericho and they had won. Do you remember last week, the story was how Joshua led the people to follow God's instruction and they went round and round and they went round seven times, didn't they? And do you remember what happened on the seventh time? It was different to the others. And they shouted and the trumpets blew and the walls came down and then they took control over the city and they destroyed the city, just as God had said. After Jericho, there was another city that Joshua and the Israelites destroyed. And news spread, news spread throughout the land how God was looking after his people, what the Israelites were doing, and how God was giving them the land. And it's important to know that God told Joshua and the people to totally destroy all the people that were living there beforehand, the people that were living in their new land. They were not to make friends with them, God said, don't make peace with them, because the danger was, God knew that there was a danger that they would make the Israelites forget him and start worshipping false gods. And so some people, they wanted to fight back. They didn't want the Israelites to take their land, but some people were scared. They didn't want to have the Israelites beat them. They didn't want the Israelites to destroy their cities and take away their land. And so some of them from an important city called Gibeon, and their men were very good at fighting, but they didn't want to fight. They came up with a plan to ask the Israelites for peace. Oh, the people from Gibeon played a trick on Joshua. They pretended to be from somewhere else. They wanted to make peace with him, but they knew that he had to drive the people from their land. They came up to Joshua and said, Joshua, Joshua. We're so tired, we've come from such a long way away. Please, will you make peace with us? 
Look, look, holes in our clothes, dirt on our shirts. Look at our footwear, look at our boots, our sandals, they're so old. These were new when we started. And Joshua said, are you sure that you've come from a long way? You know that I can't make peace with you if you're my neighbour. How do I know that you've come from a long way? Maybe you are just being close, maybe you are living close. And the people said, but look, look, our donkeys, they're too tired to even come here. Look, look at our bags. There's holes, they're so old. Look, there's holes in the bags. Look at the food that we've got left. This food was fresh when we began. The bread is all old and hard and stale. Oh, stale. Our water, I wouldn't want to drink that. It was fresh when we came. Joshua, we want peace. We've heard how great your God is. We've heard the wonderful, mighty deeds that he's done. And we've heard how amazing his works are. We are your servants. Please let us come and have peace with you. At this point, Joshua and the Israelites made a terrible mistake. They did what they thought was best and they didn't ask God for guidance and they didn't pray. And so they thought that, yeah, those people from Gibeon, they've come such a long way. They're so tired. We need to look after them. They didn't pray. They didn't ask God what they should do. And so they said to the Gibeonites, of course, yeah, we'll give you peace. We'll let you live. We won't destroy you. Do you know what happened three days later? Three days later, the Israelite people heard that the Gibeonites had not come a long way. They heard that they were their near neighbours and they heard what they had pretended to do. So the Israelites went to the, Gibeon, the city of Gibeon and they went to see how close they were and they grumbled to Joshua and to their other leaders. They said, why have you made peace with these people? These people that we should have been driving out of our land, as God had told us to. Why did you make peace? Joshua said, I can't kill them now. We promised them peace. We promised that we, did not, we would not destroy them. But I've got a plan. Instead of being the same as us, instead of being like our family, we'll make them our servants. We'll make them carry our wood, chop our wood, carry our water and... They can be our servants because they tricked us. Today's lesson is the last lesson from the book of Joshua for now. And next week, the lesson is from the New Testament. And throughout the rest of the book of Joshua, we see how God helped the Israelites to win more battles and to defeat the people and to drive them out of the land as he said that they should. So the people wouldn't tempt the Israelites to worship false gods. Eventually, there was peace in all of the land. Eventually, the, uh, the land was at rest and the people were, uh, were, were not having to fight anymore. And Joshua divided the land between the different families, the different tribes of Israel. I'll read a couple of verses now from Joshua chapter 21 and verse 44 and 45. The Lord gave them rest, gave them peace on every side, just as he had sworn, just as he had promised to their forefathers. Not one of their enemies withstood them, no one could defeat them. The Lord handed all their enemies over to them. The Lord helped them defeat all their enemies. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to the house of Israel found. Every one was fulfilled. Isn't that incredible? Every one of the Lord's good promises to Israel came true. Every one of the promises that God made to his people came true. And that's the same for us today. So to sum up the story so far, and hopefully to try and help you to remember the story. First of all, we had the men from Gibeon came and they were pretending where they were from to Joshua, weren't they? They were pretending that they were from such a long way away because they wanted peace with the Israelites. They didn't tell the truth. Joshua offered them a partial peace. When he found out that they had tricked him, he offered them a partial peace, a half peace. He said, well, we're not going to destroy you because we've promised that we won't destroy you. So we can't go back on our promise. But things can't be the same again. You can't be part of our family. You'll be our servants. So it's like a half a piece, a partial piece. Now, the wonderful thing, the wonderful promise that God gives us is that we can enjoy full peace, a proper peace with him. We can enjoy a proper peace and we enjoy that proper peace 
because Jesus has died. And we don't have to pretend. We don't have to pretend that we're someone else. We don't have to pretend that we're better than we are. And the proper peace that we can enjoy through Jesus with God, it's not half. It's not that we're God's servants. We're invited and welcomed into God's family. Isn't that wonderful? And God wants us to come to him, come on our knees and ask, God, ask him to forgive us for all the sin that we've done, all the wrong that we've done, all that we've hurt him. He wants us to come to him and say, God, we're sorry, please forgive us. And he has promised that he will give us proper peace, full peace, so that we can become part of his family. Isn't that amazing? And I'd like you to think of that today. Think of that this week. And if you haven't yet asked God for that peace, if you haven't asked God to make peace with him, then ask your parents more and think about him more this week and something that you need to do for yourself. Thank you for listening and hope to see you soon.